It'll drop it down, drop it way over there. Beat first in hell and back again. What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is ODST plog number four. I am slicing and 3D printing an OD a full-size wearable uh, replica ODST helmet from Halo. I'm actually really excited because I've been working on this a lot recently. Different parts of the helmet were printed with different printers, different slicers, and different filaments. So it's gonna be interesting how it all ends up coming together later. So right now I've added more pieces and really I've only taped them together just so that I can kind of get an idea of how it's starting to look. And it's only like, you know, there's still a good third of the top half, but all those pieces are here. So I just realized I never made coffee. You can't do anything without coffee. All right, my plan is as follows. I need to rip the tape off, take the pieces apart, glue everything on the top half together, glue the top half to the bottom half, and hopefully top half and bottom half line up. Here we go. For the record, I was using gaffer's tape here. Gaffer's tape has a really strong bond for test fitting parts like this, but it does not leave a residue behind like duct tape does. These pieces are all glued together. I am gonna go ahead and glue the rest of the strip into place. The type of glue that I'm using is I'm using a combination of Zappa Gap, which is just a kind of a standard CA glue and Instaset, uh, also known as Zip Kicker. This stuff is great because the Instaset is a chemical solution that pretty much instantly bonds the super, instantly uh, sets the super glue, hence the name Instaset, uh, which is great for somebody like me who is super impatient. I can already tell that I'm gonna have an issue with the parts lining up. As long as they're close. Those three pieces are in place. Now I need to start picking and placing these parts. This tool I'm using is really awesome. Uh, it is a machinist deburring tool. Brand here is Noga. But it has a ceramic 90 degree border to it. <clears throat> so it's really nice. It just tears through uh, regular PLA. It's really nice for cleaning up parts. So the closer I get to the end, the closer I'm getting to just deciding the whole thing needs to be printed over again, basically. It's pretty bad, like look at this. There's a really bad gap right here where it's not lining up. This whole panel doesn't want to line up properly. Now, this is by no means the file designer's fault. He designed this helmet to be printed in all one piece or maybe two pieces. He did not design it to be printed in 30 something different pieces like I've been printing it. I'm surprised I got this far before realizing this is not the right way to do this. I'm still gonna finish gluing it together though, just so that I can say it's done. All right, top half is done. So let's see how this lines up with the bottom half. Unsurprisingly, not very well. Let's just go ahead and glue it. Screw it. Screw it. Uh, no, glue it, not screw it. Oh, man. 
Man, this is bad. Oof. This is done. It's all glued together. And honestly, I do think I'm gonna end up printing it over again because this thing is a nightmare. Now, I'm sure from a distance it probably looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But if you start looking at it up close, uh, that top half and bottom half just absolutely do not line up properly at all. And no amount of Bondo is gonna be able to fix that. It's interesting though, because you can see the different stages of this project that I've been on. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but this whole bottom ring is, is almost yellow. This chunk of the top half was printed way less than a year ago. It was probably just a couple months ago. This whole chunk right here that I just installed was printed mm, it, during this last week. So you can see very yellow, a little bit of yellow, very white. Three different filaments, two different printers, in three different time frames. No wonder the parts don't line up properly. All of those factors combined create a situation where, to be honest with you, I am not entirely surprised that it turned out really crappy. But it's a learning experience, and I've learned that printing things in, multi in this many different parts with various time periods and various filaments and various printers is probably not a great idea. Now, I'm sure there are probably ways I could have made this work, and if there are, post in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on how I could have made this work properly with all those different variables. I, but I do like this. I think I'm going to keep it, and I think I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do about possibly reprinting it a little bit more uh, so, that it, so that it prints prop, so that it all works together a little bit better next time. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate the feedback. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. Uh, give me some pointers. I always love getting feedback. In the next video, I'd like to explore how to redo this in a different way that actually kind of works a little bit better uh, so that I can have a nice helmet to wear uh, to cons and, and maker fairs and such. For now, I'll see you in the comments section, and later, I'll see you in the next video. <clears throat> now we have plastic chunks and coffee. I'm done. I'm done. We're done. This video's over. No more. We're done.